Hello, and welcome back to Crime Labs. Today, we'll be covering the case of serial murderer Henry Lewis Wallace, better known as the Taco Bell Strangler. If you would like to hear more information about this case, please visit the Cola City Crime Podcast in the link here. Henry Lewis Wallace was born in Barnwell, South Carolina, but most of his murders occurred in North Carolina. He came from a single-parent home, so his mother would work long hours in the textile industry, trying to make ends meet. Henry's mother, Lottie, was a very harsh disciplinarian. This was partially due to Lottie growing up in a not-so-great environment herself. Her mother passed away at an early age, and her father abandoned her. Henry would grow up in a home during the late 50s and 60s that did not have any indoor plumbing or electricity, which is not necessarily a good environment, to produce productive citizens, according to the social worker that was appointed to Henry before his trial. His mother would constantly criticize and belittle Henry over the smallest things, and her punishments would be much worse. Henry had a sister, Yvonne, and his mother would force them to beat each other with a switch. Henry would even talk about how awful this was for himself, and how he would rather been receiving the beating instead of the one giving the beating. When Henry got into high school, he joined the cheerleading squad and was described as polite and upbeat. He graduated from high school in 1983 and eventually joined the U.S. Naval Reserve in 1984 after a failed attempt at college and a job at a local radio station. Henry had a great reputation while serving in the Navy Reserves, but he would eventually ruin that job along with his marriage. In 1992, he moved to Charlotte, North Carolina. He would start dating again, but yet again, that would not last long. During the time that Henry moved back to North Carolina, Charlotte was becoming the new place to be. This would affect the Charlotte-Mecklenburg Police Department, though. From 1992 to 1994, the police knew they had someone that was preying on young women, but due to the mass growth in population, there were not enough resources for the police officers to do their jobs properly. This would allow Henry to continue murdering innocent women for two years. Henry's first victim was Caroline Love. On June 19, 1992, her sister Kathy Love received a call from Caroline's manager at Bojangles saying that she never showed up for her shift. A missing persons report was filed, but she would not be found until almost two years later. Only eight months later, on February 9, 2003, 20-year-old Shauna Hawk also went missing. Shauna's mother knew that something was not right because this was so out of character for her. Her mother and boyfriend also searched for Shauna. Unfortunately, they found her naked body submerged in a tub of water. They rushed her to the hospital, but she was pronounced dead. Henry's next victim was Audrey Spain, a 24-year-old woman who is described as a very dependable employee at the local Taco Bell. She failed to show up to work and did not call out either. This was so out of character for Audrey that the manager called Audrey's sister but didn't get an answer, so his next step was to drive to Audrey's apartment to see if she was home. He noticed that Audrey's car was there, but did not get an answer. Once in the apartment, he saw Audrey lying on the bed with bulging eyes and what looked like a t-shirt and bra wrapped around her neck. 19-year-old Valencia Jumper was Henry's next victim. She was going to school in Charlotte, but was originally from Columbia. She also worked at a local food lion and clothing shop. She was dating a man named Zachary, who went to see Valencia, but when he got to the apartment door, he noticed he could smell and started to see smoke. The fire department was called, and they found Valencia's lifeless body severely burned on her bed. A short five weeks later, after Valencia's death, 20-year-old Michelle Stinson's body was found in her kitchen by her two young sons, ages one and three. The oldest of the two boys ran to find someone and would tell them, Mama is sleeping on the floor. Michelle was found strangled and stabbed, left for dead in a puddle of her own blood. Unfortunately, even though these homicides happened within a five-mile radius of the East Charlotte area, they did not get a lot of media coverage. The African-American community was outraged and felt the efforts of law enforcement were one-sided. An emergency press conference was held, and the police department officials promised to deliver results and promised to continue their investigations to find the serial killer. Homicide Detective Sergeant Gary McFadden was appointed as the lead investigator. McFadden was sure to speak to each victim's family during his press conference and reassured them that the police were doing their absolute best to bring the girls justice. Let's hold a moment of silence for Michelle Stinson, Valencia Jumper, Audrey Spain, Shauna Hawk, and Caroline Love. Tune into the Cola City Crime Podcast in the links in the description to hear more about this case and to hear part two. Thanks for watching Crime Labs. Please visit our channel to watch our playlists.